Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Just want to give folks a uh, a couple moments to uh, to get on here. We're watching the participant list grow here, so we'll get every chance to get clicked on and get in here. We'll get started here very shortly. I feel like I'm doing like a telethon watching the numbers go up. So we'll get started here. Uh, my name is H.J. Waka. I am the Legislative Director here at DHS, and I'm going to be moderating today's budget briefing on building healthy communities. Before we dive in, I just wanted to let you all know that we are recording today's briefing, and we will be providing a link to the recording and slides from today with those who are registered. Uh, we ask you to please use the question box to ask any questions that you may have during today's briefing, and we'll leave time for questions at the end. We may not be able to answer all of your questions today, but we will be sure to follow up with those who we can't get to uh, to make sure that we can address your questions as, as we are able to. Our speakers today include not only myself, but also Deb Stanridge, our Deputy Secretary here at DHS, Paula Tran, our State Health, Health Officer in our Division of Public Health, as well as Andy Forsyth, our uh, Budget Director, to help answer any questions. And with that, I want to turn it over to our exuberant and our exceptional uh, Deputy Secretary, Deb Standridge. Deb, take it away. Oh, HJ, thank you for that introduction. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for being here today. As HJ said, I'm Deb Standridge, Deputy Secretary for the Wisconsin Department of Health Services, and I am excited to join you today. Governor Evers 2023 to 2025 Breakthrough Budget for DHS leverages Wisconsin's unprecedented surplus to make substantial investments in Wisconsin's healthcare, behavioral health, public health, and long-term care services, as well as initiatives to advance equity and reduce disparities in our state. For our partners joining us today, we are so appreciative of your support to ensure this budget helps to support a healthier Wisconsin. Thank you so much for your tremendous amount of work you do every day to protect and promote the safety and health of our Wisconsinites in your communities. We need to ensure every Wisconsinite and every community has the supports provided in this budget that invests in working families and drives economic growth. Good health is essential for everyone, and Governor Evers is dedicated to present, preserving and protecting the health of Wisconsinites throughout the state. Before we go into details of what's in the budget to support these initiatives, I will turn things back over to my esteemed colleague, H.J. Waka, our legislative director, to talk more about the budget process. H.J.? Much appreciated, Deb, and thank you. Uh, so we would like to start with, a lot of you are familiar with the budget process. For those of you who might not be, we would like to start with a bit of a high level overview of the state budget process and where we are currently at in that process. Uh, next slide. So for those of you that haven't heard me say this before, I'll say it again. Uh, the budget process never really ends. As soon as one budget is signed into law, we start working on the next budget pro the next budget cycle and, and redoing all the stuff again. So if we were to start uh, at the top of the circle here, that red arrow pointing to the right, uh, that's where we're starting. And we've already completed those processes right now. So that included, you know, the preparation uh, and submittal of agency budget requests that was done, you know, last year, beginning April through September. And then once they go from the, from the agency side, they then go over to the Department of Administration for review, uh, and then on to the governor, where the governor makes those uh, determinations of what is going to be into the governor's budget, uh, along with the various revenue estimates to get us to where, where we are today, which is the yellow circle at the bottom, the yellow arrow at the bottom of the circle, uh, which is the process where kind of a lot of the, the, the meat is and where the rubber hits the road of. The governor has introduced his budget. He introduced that back in February, and then now it goes over to the legislature and the Joint Committee on Finance. Uh, for their review and for, for their uh, discussion and deliberation. They're actually holding uh, agency hearings, right? I think they're still going on as of right now. Um, they had a couple yesterday, uh, two days ago. They have another couple today. Um, but once joint finance gets through its you know agency hearings, it'll then do what is called the roadshow, where they then go on to uh, various locations throughout the state 
uh, to hear to solicit input from from members of the public. Um, after that, we'll then uh, they'll convene and then they'll start having executive sessions here sometime you know late April, early to mid May, uh, and then they will pass the budget out of committee. Uh, and then move that on to the legislature. Well, the legislature will then vote on it, uh, give send it over to uh, the governor, the governor will sign it. That gets us to the blue arrow. Uh, and then we start the whole process all over again. So right now we are at a, at really at a, at a critical juncture um, for our budget because right now the governor's put his budget forward and now you know it's time for, for stakeholders such as yourselves to go out to, to advocate for uh, you know, the initiatives that you like in the governor's budget to carry those forth to uh, to joint finance to make sure that they make it all the way through the process to the end of the final bill. Uh, so next slide. And for those of you who are wondering about where joint finance is going to go uh, for the roadshore, uh, we put those up on the screen here. Uh, those are starting in Waukesha here next week, Eau Claire the week after, as well as the Dells, and then up to Manaqua uh, at the end of the month here on April 26th. And again, those are, those are open to members of the public. I uh, highly encourage you to, if you can, either attend one or multiple of these uh, if you can, or have your, your advocates, your stakeholders also attend to make sure that your voice is heard uh, in this public forum and in these public settings uh, for the initiatives in the governor's budget. Next slide. So, so what are some of the highlights that we want to touch about broadly before we deep, dive deeper into more of the, the public health aspects we'll be talking about today? And as many of you all know, healthcare is a cornerstone of our workforce and our economic development in all of our communities across the state of Wisconsin. And Governor Ewer's budget makes critical investments to support families and address longstanding workforce needs to drive economic growth, which is what we want to see do keep happening here uh, with Governor Ewer's budget. Next slide. So again, for those of you who don't know, uh, the DHS budget is one of the largest in the state. Uh, and this year, we are averaging over $17 billion annually on an all-funds basis uh, for all the various programs uh, and initiatives that are within DHS's purview and within the governor's budget. So for what are we going to look at here? So what are some of the, the next items? I want to go to the next slide and talk about some of more high-level items. So obviously, what's in there? Obviously, is Medicaid expansion is going to be in there. We want to expand that. That is going to be a key key initiative that helps underpin a lot of the DHS initiatives uh, within the governor's budget. We wanna focus on building healthy communities across the board for all of our communities, for all of our populations across the state, uh, from rich to poor, from urban to rural, to serve to underserved. We wanna make sure that wherever you are in Wisconsin, you have a healthy, thriving and vibrant community. We also want to improve mental health and crisis services. This is indeed, as Governor Evers wants to say, or has said, uh, this is the year of mental health. And there have been a substantial number of uh, mental health investments put forward in Governor Evers' budget uh, at DHS, at DPI, uh, DOA, DVA, other state agencies. Uh, this is a you know, you know, half billion dollars worth of investments. And, and it's, it's critical and it's vital that we address those areas. And we've had a, another briefing on this one. So... I encourage you to uh, go back and take a look at that if you haven't been able, but if you have any questions on some of the mental health initiatives that are in the governor's budget, we're happy to talk about with you uh, with those at any point in time. We also want to make uh, significant investments in our long-term care uh, and our workforce, because we know that that as we have a aging population um, and as a result of the pandemic, you know, a lot of the issues that we've seen there want to continue that we make sure that we have an adequate workforce, an adequate net for our seniors, for our disabled populations, because these, these, these communities are only going to grow and the need is only going to grow along with them. We want to make sure that we have the adequate infrastructure and workforce in place to make sure that we can successfully and appropriately take care of, of, of these people in our communities, our, our elders and, and, our, and our disabled. Next slide. But once again, want to highlight for folks the, the impacts that Medicaid expansion has for the governor's budget. So approximately under expansion, we'd be covering 90,000 Wisconsin night, 300, or sorry, 30,000 of which are uninsured at this point in time. And in doing so, we would be expanding coverage uh, to 138% of the federal poverty level and seeing $1.6 billion in savings that can then be reinvested back into Wisconsin uh, through a number of, of initiatives and healthcare initiatives. And as of right now, uh, last week we were one of 11 states. Now, as of Monday of this week, we are now one of only 10 states 
that have that have not expanded uh, Medicaid statewide with North Carolina uh, signing their bill into law earlier this week. So again, um, Medicaid expansion isn't just something that needs to be done, but it's absolutely critical to helping grow our economy. Uh, people who in states live in states with the uh, Medicaid expansion have experienced positive health outcomes. They have increased access to treatment and care, hospital stay open, and and jobs and and, and the economies continue to grow and there, there are positive economic factors to expanding Medicaid. And once again, I want to reiterate that this is a, a critical piece of Governor Eber's budget because it is good not just for healthcare, not just for the people who rely on these services in our communities, but also for our workforce. And by increasing the number of people that we can have in our workforce, by increasing the limits that they would be eligible to maintain coverage and care so that they don't have to worry about what they're going to do to, to maintain coverage and care for their families. So again, I uh, highly want to reiterate the importance of Medicaid expansion in Governor Ewer's budget. Next slide. Now, in terms of what some of those Medicaid savings will do, how are we going to reinvest that $1.6 million? Uh, there's going to be a lot of ways to do that. And again, I've touched on some of these other. We want to improve our public health systems. Wisconsin has some of the lowest rankings for public health expenditures nationwide. And in the midst of the, the COVID-19 pandemic, definitely something that we want to improve and make sure that we are ready for, for the next one. We want to strengthen and improve our behavioral health care systems. Again, it's the year of mental health and you know, you, you can open a newspaper and hear about all the different mental health issues that people are dealing with in our communities and, and the dire need that we have for these services. Same goes for our long-term care communities. Again, want to continue to invest in our workforce, make sure that we're taking care of our senior and our disabled populations, and making sure that folks have insurance and access to uh, affordable care and prescription drug coverage. So again, a lot of this is made possible because of the savings that we are able to reinvest in our state. Uh, from Medicaid expansion. So putting that $1.6 billion to good use to take care of folks across our state to give them the services and care that they that they that they need and that they have have deserved. So so with that, that is the high level uh, budget initiatives uh, that we wanted to mention for you. But again, this is we want to talk about some of the public health initiatives uh, and building our healthier communities. And again, uh, there's there's no better person to help walk us through uh, those initiatives that are in Governor Evers' budget than our incomparable and our inflappable state health officer, Paula Tran. Uh, so Paula's going to take it from here and uh, take it away, Paula. Thank you so much, HJ. I really appreciate that. Uh, public health activities lay the groundwork for healthy communities, and they protect us from diseases and injury we cannot prevent alone and help us change behaviors harmful to our health. As HJ just referenced, compared to the rest of the nation, Wisconsin has been significantly underfunding its public health efforts for years. Recognizing this fact and the importance of public health system to protect and promote the health of Wisconsinites, the governor's budget makes Wisconsin's largest GPR public health investments to date. Next slide, please. So here we'll walk through a couple of the items uh, within the budget. Uh, the first we'll highlight here is to improve birth outcomes. By allowing DHS to invest in grants for maternal and infant mortality prevention, expand fetal and infant mortality review teams, fund a grief and bereavement resource uh, for families who have lost a fetus or infant, and positions to support maternal mortality review even further. We also uh, uh, have seen extension of postpartum coverage for pregnant women in, uh, in Medicaid included in the budget, the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021, or ARPA, changed federal Medicaid law, allowing states the option to provide 12 months of continuous Medicaid eligibility following the birth of a baby by updating their state plan. Extending postpartum coverage would improve continuity of care and reduce disparities uh, in postpartum follow-up care for chronic conditions associated with mortality rates. Next slide, please. Um, we also intend to award additional emergency medical services through flex grants. Um, EMS providers have been affected by COVID-19 um, uh, as many other systems, and there has been a far greater demand for EMS services across our state. Uh, we'll see increased costs associated with providing those services and limitations on public funding for those services created by economic consequences of the pandemic. So this budget invests $150 million to continue the EMS Flex Grant Program, which provides public and private emergency services providers 
with funding for reasonable operating expenses, including but not limited to supplies, equipment, training, ambulances, and emergency response vehicles and staffing. It also updates and reforms uh, emergency medical responder certification requirements. Governor Evers' budget uh, reforms how emergency medical responders are licensed by certifying individuals as emergency medical responders if they complete a certified training program or pass the National Registry of Emergency Medical Technicians Examination for Emergency Medical Responders. It also removes barriers for first responders with post-traumatic stress disorder. This budget removes those barriers um, uh, when uh, uh, EMS uh, provider is seeking workers' compensation. Next slide, please. In addition, uh, we see dedicated resources to PFAS assessments and response. PFAS, or PER, uh, and polyfluoro alcohol substances are a group of human-made chemicals used for decades in numerous products that are known to be toxic, mobile, and don't break down naturally. A number of PFAS compounds are known to pose a risk to human health, causing adverse health effects. To prevent harmful health effects caused by PFAS, this budget proposes funding to conduct education and outreach specific to PFAS to ensure Wisconsinites are aware of the dangers. This is in addition to PFAS response investments the budget makes to the Department of Natural Resources. In addition, uh, there are investments to support reform, um, reform tobacco and vapor product sale and use. Tobacco is Wisconsin's leading cause of preventable death and costs the state more than $4.6 billion annually in healthcare and lost productivity expenses. In 2019, 20.6% of high schoolers in Wisconsin regularly use vapor products and 45.5% had tried a vapor product. To address the significant health harms caused by tobacco and vapor use, this budget increases the minimum age to purchase tobacco and vapor products from 18 to 21. This brings Wisconsin in alignment with federal law. In addition, the budget prohibits the use of vapor products in indoor locations on public, private, or charter school property and provides funding to support the American Indian quit line. Uh, there are also investments noted to prevent and respond to childhood lead poisoning. In 1978, lead was banned from being added to paint and varnish for residential use because researchers found it to be toxic to humans and animals. It can damage the brain and other systems, leading to developmental delays, learning disabilities, reduced IQ and attention span, and a range of other health and behavioral health effects. While lead can hurt anyone, children under the age of six are the most susceptible to the effects of lead poisoning. In 2020, over 2,100 children under age six had a blood lead level that exceeds the CDC's recommended levels. This budget builds upon foundations laid by previous budgets and makes key statutory changes and critical investments to continue to lower the incidence of lead poisoning in Wisconsin. This includes expanding early intervention services provided through the birth to three program to children with a blood lead level over the CDC recommended levels. Next slide, please. This budget also uh, supports the launch of an electrocardiogram screening pilot for youth participating in athletics. On March 25th, 2019, Waukesha North High School athlete Kai Lermer was playing pickup basketball with friends while he went into cardiac arrest. His parents later learned that Kai had a condition called Wolf Parkinson White syndrome, which had been previously undiagnosed. Youth physicals required to participate in high school athletics typically don't include an EKG, a test that might have diagnosed Kai sooner. By providing $4,172,000 in GPR in fiscal year 2024 and 2025 for the pilot program in Waukesha and Milwaukee counties, the budget allows local health departments to prevent cardiac related health incidents in student athletes and will be critical in identifying any best practices and strategies for consideration in developing a future potential statewide expansion of the screening program. The budget also uh, aims to improve availability of healthy food. It's well established that eating sufficient fresh fruits and vegetables can improve health and reduce risk of cardiovascular disease and some cancers. Less than one in four Wisconsinites consumes fruits and vegetables at least five times a day. The Double Up Food Bucks pilot program is an opportunity for food share members to increase their overall buying power by matching federal dollars spent purchasing fruits and vegetables. Governor Evers' budget recommends instituting this pilot program to allow food share benefits to be stretched further. 
And finally, at the slide notes, uh, investments to maintain the personal protective equipment warehouse stockpile. The warehouse may, remains a critical component of the COVID-19 pandemic response and other emerging infectious diseases uh, response recovery and, uh, efforts. Examples of PPE in the stockpile include face shields, goggles, gloves, respirators, coveralls, non-surgical face masks, and non-surgical gowns. Having an ample supply of this equipment is critical to reducing the risk of exposure to disease and ensuring the health and safety of healthcare responders throughout Wisconsin. The budget creates a 60-day stockpile of this PPE. Next slide, please. The budget also allows us to enhance uh, efforts related to our adult uh, protective services system. Wisconsin's population is aging as HJ reference and incidents of exploitation and abuse are unfortunately increasing. Wisconsin's APS system requires uh, recommitment of funding for training, needs assessments for tribal audit adult protective services, guardian support and elder justice training grants, and other adult protective services enhancements. This budget also provides money to counties to help administer frontline adult protective services programs. Another area of investment is healthy aging through evidence-based prevention programs. There are currently 1.06 million adults over 65 years old in Wisconsin. By 2040, that number is expected to grow by almost 50%. Investing in interventions that promote older adults' health and support their ability to remain in their homes and communities is essential to help limit cost growth in long-term care programs and to promote quality of life for individuals as they age. Governor Evers' budget invests in proven programs across Wisconsin to improve health, reduce costs, and prevent or delay disease among adults. There are also investments to translate the Department of Health Services website and uh, forms into multiple languages. DHS supports accessibility for marginalized communities in Wisconsin by translating a number of its digital and print materials into languages spoken throughout the state, including Spanish, Hmong, Somali, and others. Translating the website into multiple languages would improve access to information for non-English speakers. And this budget provides funding to translate the DHS website and forms into multiple languages. Lastly, on this slide, uh, there are investments to serve all el eligible children in Medicaid Children's Long-Term Support Program. Governor Evers' budget proposal guarantees all eligible children with disabilities who have long-term care needs can access care in their communities and prevent children being put on a wait list for critical services. Next slide, please. As H.J. just mentioned, the governor has declared 2023 the year of mental health. The past few years have been tough on all Wisconsinites, and the governor's budget recognizes that behavioral health is essential to overall wellness. Governor Evers um, has taken steps uh, to ensure that this budget builds on this vision for the year of mental health. We must do all that we can now to ensure those who need mental health support across have access to care when they need it. We cannot look back two years from now as we prepare the next budget and wonder whether we should have done more and sooner to take good care of our mental health. The budget supports a vast array of diverse and inclusive services to improve crisis response, invest in mental health across access across the state for people across their lifespan in their communities, fund suicide prevention efforts and expand substance use disorder services. The budget also helps ensure the right supports are available at the right time by expanding an integrated behavioral health system that provides prevention, intervention and treatment services for all Wisconsinites. In addition to the investments that build healthy communities, I'd also like to highlight a few initiatives aimed at improving mental health. Next slide, please. According to the latest Youth Risk Behavior Survey from the CDC, 42% of high school students experience persistent feelings of sadness and hopelessness. They released data last month that shows 57% of U.S. teen girls felt persistently sad or hopeless in 2021. This is double the rate of boys and represents a nearly 60% increase and the highest level reported over the past decade. The report also confirms ongoing and extreme distress among teens who identify as LGBTQ+. As we know, it's not just our children who need care as there are millions of adults in the US affected by mental health concerns each year. Based on 2020 data from the National Alliance on Mental Health, one in five adults in the US experience mental health conditions each year. 
On the next slide, you'll see that we are um, uh, excited to see expanding staffing and resources for Wisconsin's 988 Suicide and Crisis Lifeline Services. These lifeline services um, help answer calls, texts, and chats from residents all across our state. This went into effect in July 2022. The counselors at the Wisconsin Lifeline are trained to listen and support people through their distress with a focus on de-escalation and coping skills. The budget provides state funds to maintain the call centers and support the increase in call volume the Lifeline has experienced since its launch. The total funding is over $3 million. We also uh, see investments in establishing a suicide prevention program. DHS will create a suicide prevention program using these funds to coordinate suicide prevention efforts all across our state. The program will also develop and provide educational materials and public awareness campaigns on suicide prevention. The program will further provide grants to specific um, prevention to the specific prevention of suicide by firearm use and support staff trainings at firearm retailers and ranges excuse me, on how to recognize those at high risk. Total funding is $1 million. That concludes the budget initiatives we're highlighting today, and I'm going to turn it back uh, to HJ to take us through the rest of our session. And thank you, Paula, and thank you for, for sharing all that information. So uh, again, as we kind of said before, we have a couple more links coming up here. Uh, additional information is available on the DHS site, and as we noted at the beginning, we have been recording today's webinar, and we will provide a link uh, to the recording and the slides for those who have registered for today's briefing. Um, but with that, we would like to take the time and, and the opportunity to open the floor for questions. Uh, so please, uh, in the chat below, in the little chat box at the bottom of the, of the Zoom screen, uh, if you can please type in your questions, and we'll try to address those uh, as best we can. Floor is open. Okay, did we do that good a job? No one's got questions? I'll take, I'll take that as a yes. I knew we had the right folks on the call with Dev and Paula. So um, just move on to the next slide. Again, uh, for those that wanna learn more about the governor's budget, uh, please go to our website. Uh, we have a whole budget link set up for you guys there to go and take a look at that. So again, I uh, highly encourage you all to go there and check that out. There'll be a number of materials on there, uh, talking points. Uh, if you if uh, you find it useful to borrow from those for your own conversations uh, with members of the legislature, we are we are encouraging you to do that. Oh, oh, we got a we got a question here. I'm sorry, um, Doug LaBelle. Will suicide and mental health include gambling disorder? Uh, Paula, I would want to turn that one over to you. And Andy, I know you're on the call. See if you have any thoughts on that. But Paula, um, any chance you, you have any thoughts on does that mental health include gambling? Yeah, so far what we have seen is there are sort of general supports for suicide and mental health, and it doesn't um, uh, specify the actual causes. So as I think about how we would implement, we would certainly include any range of um, either clinical disorders or in general folks that are experiencing mental health challenges through uh, services as well as through um, the 988 uh, call line. Thank you, Paula. Pause for more questions if folks have them. Okay. Oh, another one. Um, does the Medicaid expansion also include increased reimbursement to providers? Uh, the short answer to that question is yes, but Andy, I uh, want to give you the opportunity uh, to maybe dive into a little bit more of the details on um, the uh, increases to providers. Right. Thanks, uh, HJ. Um, yeah, let me uh, talk about that for a little bit. Um, yeah, the, the governor's budget has um, uh, an array of uh, reimbursement increases for Medicaid providers. Um, there are ones that are specifically uh, tied to Medicaid expansion, 
and that is um, those are increases to um, medic um, to hospital access payments and supplemental payments. Um, the uh, supplemental payment we make to pediatric hospitals, um, as well as um, just a regular rate increase um, to hospital reimbursement. So those increases total um, about six hundred twenty-six million dollars. Um, uh, for hospitals over the biennium. Um, and then there's a increase for primary care services. So primary care physicians um, and related providers. Um, and that is um, also explicitly conditioned on implementing Medicaid expansion. And I believe that dollar amount totals um, $189 million for the biennium. Thank you, Randy. Uh, Paul, I want to send this next one over to you. Question we got is, who will be responsible for the electrocardiogram screening? Will those be local health departments or providers? Yep, so uh, local health departments would receive the investments to support the program. And similar to other uh, youth physicals, especially for athletes, this would done, be done in collaboration with providers. So uh, we imagine outreach and engagement with providers to provide this particular service. Um, and there is a possibility to consider how those uh, resources that would be distributed to local health departments would also support providers. Wonderful, and thank you, Paula. And I think, Andy, we got a follow-up to the provider question. Uh, I'm assuming this question is asking, are there any reimbursement increases for oral health providers? Um, there, there are not um, increases to uh, Medicaid reimbursements for, uh, for dental providers in this budget. Um, last budget, there was a substantial increase, um, about a 40% increase uh, for dental services. Um, in Medicaid, and we want to have the chance to uh, assess the impact of that really significant uh, increase um, uh, for the for the current and um, next biennium. The budget though does have um, a couple of dental initiatives. Um, it would establish um, licensure for dental therapists, and then it also includes funding um, in DHS uh, for grants to. Um, for dental um, dental coordinators, uh, one for each of our uh, Medicaid managed care regions, and those um, folks will be responsible for uh, connecting Medicaid members with uh, dentists who are um, able and, and interested in serving uh, Medicaid members. Next question. Well, this is a, this one's a loaded, so I'm, I'm going to take this one. Um, and and this uh, I'll just take this one. Uh, question is: Do we envision this budget passing? What cuts might we expect? Um, the answer is: There's always a budget that will be passed. The budget is essentially the one bill that has to pass every session uh, from the legislature. So there will be a budget that is passed. I have yet to see regardless of who sits in the east wing in the governor's office whether it be republican or democrat um and even when you know there when you know it was you know uh complete republican control uh with governor walker and republican legislature to see that the governor's budget makes its way all the way through exactly as the way the governor proposes it so even on those those scenarios uh rarely do you see uh just everything taken you know carte blanche from one side of the house to the other from one branch of government to the other um, so, but something will pass. In terms of what cuts we might expect, that remains to be seen. Um, I never want to put the cart before the horse. Um, obviously, we know about some initiatives that might be more, um, you know, more tough to get through than others, but it's always interesting to see what makes its way through. Uh, sometimes you'll see certain initiatives that are in the governor's budget get a bump, um, and some others you thought that we're, we're fairly certain on, they get a bit of a decrease. So, Again, that's why we got to play out the process. That's why it's always good to engage uh, our stakeholder partners on this to continue to advocate uh, for these initiatives uh, to make sure that they make it all the way through. Uh, next question we got is that under the investing mental under the investing in mental health section, uh, it says uh, that there'll be a marijuana excise tax to support behavioral health services. Um, 
Andy, I wonder if you could exp help us with that one. The, the follow up to that is so I guess the short question is um, how is that tax uh, for marijuana from uh, from legalization of marijuana being used to support behavioral health services? And does that include any other uh, derivatives such as Delta 8, 9, or 10? Um, I think I'm assuming this relates to the governor's legalization of marijuana under the budget, but wonder if you can go to the details of that a little bit further. Yeah, um, that's a good question. I um, um, we're not experts on excise taxes over here at DHS, so I, I can't speak to what um, how the excise tax would be implemented with regard to specific products. So what I do know is that the revenue generated from the excise tax goes into a special fund. Um, and um, the, the governor's budget budgets that revenue for, um, yeah, as you say, um, um, uh, allocations to counties to support behavioral health services. Thank you, Andy. Paula, uh, this next question is for you relating to food share and the public health unwinding. Um, are there any initiatives for healthy food support given the reduction in the food share benefits with the PHA unwinding? Or is the Double Up Food Bucks program the only program um, in this governor's budget? And a follow-up to that is, is that program contingent upon Medicaid expansion for the Double Up Food Bucks? Yeah, and I might ask for some help from Andy on this as well. As far as I'm aware, this is the only piece um, in the proposed in the budget that impacts DHS. Um, I will say related to the unwinding, our D Division of Medicaid Services and our Division of Public Health are working very hard to ensure Medicaid members understand all of their resources available to them in the purview of Medicaid, as well as through other programming, such as um, through our WIC program. So there's a great deal of communication occurring um, to ensure those members uh, understand the wide range of resources available to them. Um, and we know our local partners are hard at work to also ensure local community members have access to local resources. Uh, you can find more information on the public health unwinding on the Division of Medicaid Services website. And I might pass it over to Andy to speak to any other pieces that he might be aware of within the budget proposal. Um, no, what you said, uh, Paula, was is all correct. So um, that is the the um, the nutrition initiative in, in the DHS budget. Um, and it is not explicitly um, conditioned on Medicaid expansion. Great questions, everybody. Any more questions? All right. Well, those those were great, and really appreciate uh, the questions from uh, from the group and from the attendees. And again, once again, want to make a plug uh, for everyone to please go check out our budget website. There's a lot of good information on there. We're constantly updating it, continuously updating it, and so we'll be keeping having uh, new information, uh, backgrounders, talking points. We'll all be there, and we'll be updating that um, as quick as we can, uh, and if there's anything else that pops up. So for that, all that, I want to say thank you to Deputy Secretary Deb Standridge, as well as to both Paula and Andy uh, for helping us uh, walk through parts of the governor's budget, as well as to help answer questions. And I want to thank all of you who attended today's briefing uh, for taking the time out of your very busy days to sit here uh, and to listen to us to, to further explain some of the initiatives in the governor's budget and, and want to thank you for everything that you do to protect and promote the health and safety of Wisconsin Wisconsinites across the board and across the state and your communities. You know, we we do greatly appreciate your time. We appreciate your work and, and your partnership uh, and your willingness to engage with us on the budget process. So again, on behalf of, of today's panel, I uh, want to say thank you. And again, if you have any questions or follow up or something that you uh, weren't able to ask today or something that comes to you, you know, after we uh, leave here, um, please feel free to reach out to us. I will work on getting you a response and any information that we uh, can uh, as quick as we can. So once again, thank you and everyone have a great afternoon.